uh, equity work, race and equity work, and the race in particular, that uh, everything is okay when you're talking about things until things aren't okay. That's when you really begin to see, you know, when the rubber meets the road and when a person disagrees. So for example, um, it's not actually in white uh, 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 fragility, but Robin D'Angelo also speaks about, you know, to what degree uh, does a white person have to listen to a person of color, provide them with feedback, reflect on the feedback, and then act upon that feedback? Because what, what can potentially happen is that a person who identifies as white can potentially live their entire life thinking about the successes that they're going to have, and those successes could, could go an entire lifespan without having to interact with a person of color. But for a person of color, that's impossible. It is impossible for a person of color to think about a trajectory of success without ever interacting with the person who identifies as white. And so what I find it to be incumbent upon uh, people who identify as white is to, is to acknowledge that you are the judge and the jury. So if the conversation is coming up about racism, you cannot say, I'm not racist. That's not for you to decide, right? It's just like, oh, you know, you know, I believe in, in women's rights, right? It's not for someone else to decide for a woman what should happen with her body. Like that's just to me, that's just a uh, just a fact. So it's the same thing here because the concept of being anti-racist is not a destination. And that's why I was saying that sometimes understanding this intellectually can also create a reverse effect. And so the ability to understand that uh, being anti-racist is not a destination, but a journey. And part of that journey is, is developing your, an understanding and being able to peel back those layers uh, as Scott mentioned earlier uh, in the presentation. So I just wanted to, uh, to share that piece because that's critical as you move forward in the work. That's really a powerful point. Um, I really appreciate you sharing that. And you know, as we talk about peeling back those layers, I think an important thing is constantly looking at policies that exist in, in schools, at the school level and at the district level. And Kwame, I mean, what I was wondering too is like, as from a parent, when you think about policies that exist that you're aware of in West Bloomfield, what, what do you think needs to be improved in terms of equity for students? Or, or what comes to mind that we might want to examine? So uh, it was, it was, I think we may, we may touch on it, but um, the first thing is the diversity of staff. I think it's really important that um, that staff reflect the population that they serve. So uh, now that doesn't mean I feel like, you know, you should arbitrarily, you know, which would be illegal, just start removing staff members who are effective. That's not what I'm saying. I think that, you know, as positions come available, how are you recruiting, right? What, what are the recruitment efforts look like where uh, that may need to be improved that's preventing you from getting qualified candidates that reflect the populations that you serve. So uh, that's the first thing that, uh, that I would say comes to mind because I think to the point that we're making around these DEI committees, when you have more uh, diverse cultural perspectives, those experiences begin to enrich the conversations and the dialogue that you have in those meetings. Perfect. Thank you. Dr. Kelly, you want to add to that before we move on to the next topic? No, I agree uh, that staff reflecting the population of the students is a, is a definite goal of ours, and we are woefully short of that right now. So we need to take some actions to address that particular issue because of, of what Mr. Simmons said. It, it's so important to see yourself as a student in your teachers in the what you're studying and, and uh, the ideas and perspectives that people bring to the classroom and to the school 